Hi, I'm Alan Jones. You're watching the AU Review. It's rather good. So your new album, One Voice, features yep. yourself with a rather surprising duet partner, which is your 15-year-old self, I believe. Yeah, the idea behind this album is genius because I don't have to give any of my royalties to my younger self. So it's all back to me. And it, I, I heard that it sort of came about in a strange way in the cupboard, out, attic? Cupboard? Yeah, it's, no, it's an airing cupboard. Yeah, believe yes. it or not, this is a true story. It, it sounds like something a record company would make up. It does. Um, but it, it's not, <laughs> honestly, that one time ever. Um, I was at home in Wales, uh, my mum and dad, um, having a meal. I uh, had a few glasses of wine, and we were uh, sort of talking about how many albums I'd released as a kid. And dad suddenly chirped up and said, well, you know, there was one that was never released. Hang on goes up, goes to the airing cupboard, there kind of sandwiched in between my Spider-Man pants and socks was this dat tape. Um, Why aren't they that, on the album cover? Uh, no, <laughs> I'm wearing them now, yeah. what are you talking about? Yeah. Um, but basically, um, it had been there, this dat, for 30 years, gathering dust. Someone had said to my father, we're not going to release the album, his voice is broken, so keep it warm, whatever you do, or it'll get destroyed. So my dad, being the ever-practical engineer, uh, put it in the airing cupboard. Uh, and he'd remembered all that time that but it was still there. Yeah, hadn't bothered telling me, um, as dads, dads do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> dad. So my mum and I listened to it, you know, one bud each. It was a bit like I had one here and the dad was here. And mum was crying her eyes out. And, and for the first time in my life, I suppose, I was looking back at that boyhood career that only lasted four years. Mm. And I, I felt proud as well. Um, I think it was probably some of my best singing because I was 15 and a half when I did it. The voice was really powerful. And, and you've been singing for a while. I'd right? been singing oh, yes. for ages. And so, you know, I, I felt I should do something with it. And it was the ideal opportunity because it hadn't been released. So off we went to a studio about a year later. No guarantees that it would work. But the moment both voices sang together, it just gelled. Magic. And yeah, it did. Mm -hmm. I had hairs on the back of my neck standing on end. And, you know, I've this was album number 31 for me, and that had never happened before. Thanks. Yeah, I should be like about 100 years old. Yeah. Although that's nothing. I interviewed, you know, Heng Engelbert Humperdinck? Yes, yes. Um, I interviewed him uh, last year, and he was releasing album number 87. Gosh. Well, like you said before when we were talking, the 80-year-old album, perhaps with the, you know, yourself now singing, yeah. that's going to happen. It's going to happen, control. yeah. yeah. I just have to stay alive. <laughs> You will. Thank you. <laughs> so all this singing keeps one young. Oh, do you think? Yes, okay. I think so. Um, and do you know how the songs originally back in the day were sort of picked? Uh, yeah, it was, an, it was an album of folk songs. Yes. So it was supposed to be four from England, four from Ireland, four from Scotland, four from Wales. Very uh, Great Britain. Um, <laughs> before Brexit and all that business. Um, let's not go there. Um, so, yeah, I just chose the best tracks from the the dat and uh, did a few sort of uh, solo album uh, solo tracks as well from from me now yeah. um, sort of grown up Alad as opposed to little Alad uh, which is what we call Alad little, little Alad yeah little Alad um, a bit smaller than that actually um, yeah and so yeah it was a folk song album and was there anything that you wish you had sung back then that could make you on the album now can I can I just tell you that in four years as a kid I did sixteen albums so I sang more or less everything. <laughs> You Everything I could, from uh, walking in the air to Oh for the Wings of a Dove to Sailing by Rod Stewart and everything in between. Well, I, not to make you sound old or anything, but I think Walking in the Air was one of the first digital songs that I had had. Oh, really? Yes, it was on my whatever the player back then, Windows Media Player and things okay. like that. I remember listening to it. Uh, am I allowed to ask how old you are? Uh, 27. All 28 right. this year. All so right, you know. okay. About 20 years Person. difference between us. Yeah. Right, I feel yeah, really, so really old now. Brilliant. It's, it's something that I always remember. That was just one of the, I think I had about five tracks and that was that was one of them. I yeah. don't know where it came from. It must have been on one of my parents' records. And oh, thanks. Like Even that. better. Oh, God. Uh, like interview terminated music. at... Um, <laughs> it's a song that there's no escaping that song. Uh, well, there hasn't been for the last 31 years. Um, but, you know, yeah, there are worse course. things that you could be associated with. It's a, a really nice cartoon, and, uh, and I look forward to the check that bounces uh, onto my floor every January. Um, and on the Australian edition of the album, I think yeah. we've got something special, which is the Dame Joan Sutherland yeah. extra track. Do the you Dame. remember the Dame? The 
the number one in Australia. Yeah. Um, and do you remember working with her at oh, all I do. back in the day? Yeah, I do. It was in a church in uh, London, and we recorded with the Academy of Ancient Music and Christopher Hogwood. And the, the, way, the, the only reason I remember it massively is it was the first job I ever had to audition for as a boy soprano. Usually, you know, they just offered me the job and I'd do it. Um, but Christopher Hogwood, well, yeah, thanks. <laughs> I think I was the only one around. Well, I thought I was, but mm-hmm. there was this other boy who was uh, quite big in the Royal Opera at the time, and uh, Christopher Hogwood wasn't sure if he wanted me or a big opera operatic sound Mm -hmm. so I remember having to do this audition and at the time the pressure was double on me because I was being followed around by um, documentary makers at the time so you know they also followed me as I had my driving test so double whammy (laughs) I could have failed my driving test and not got the job as well Uh, luckily I passed both I wore a very short skirt for my driving test and um, and I got the audition so um, you know so there I was in a church sandwiched in between Emma Kirkby and Dame Joan Sutherland and Dame Joan was in the back yes well I was tiny Um, (laughs) and Dame Joan was in the back crocheting away uh, not taking any notice of anyone and then would stand up three seconds before her bit walk up to the microphone and I just remember this voice coming out and I I literally I just open mouth just went Wow, mm. you know, and but I got to know her then very well, and we bumped into each other over the years, and uh, she was always a lot of fun, but and um, just someone with a really nice heart, genuine person, yes, well, a true star, true star. Well, she has our best opera hall named after her, so I think there that's quite well deserved. Yeah. yeah. Quite